Hey everybody, Kaldheim is closing in. Uh, the set is fully previewed now, and a lot of the set reviews are coming out. I know Limited Resources has just uh, put up their set review. I haven't dove into that yet, but I'm looking forward to checking out what Marshall and Luis think on these cards. Uh, in the meantime, I've thrown a, uh, a Channel Points Redemption out to chat where they can name a card from the new set for me to talk about for a little bit. Kind of do a mini card review, a uh, a segment of the LR set review, you might say, and uh, just see what it inspires me to talk about as we learn this new set. So with no further ado, let's hop over to the left monitor and I'll show you the first one I'm gonna talk about here. It is Doomscar. Doomscar is three white white for a sorcery that says destroy all creatures. Probably what Wrath of God should have been to begin with, uh, three white white, but it, it's not. In any case, destroy all creatures. We have a wrath. Oh my god, we have a foretell wrath. So foretell, for those of you who don't know, during your turn you may pay two and exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost. Sneaky, sneaky. Now I was misreading foretell uh, uh, the other day. I was thinking, oh, well, but then they but then they know. They know a doom, uh, the, the wrath is coming. No, 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 Ryan, it says face down. So if you're playing much, uh, multiple foretell cards, it operates a lot like... Um, this 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 uh, this whole mechanic is almost like uh, morph for spells, right? Although I'm sure there's some for there's foretell creatures, but this is a like a almost a morph that you can use spells on. And uh, in this case, the hidden information is super important. Uh, being able to play this on two does a couple of things uh, that I like. One of the problems with uh, Wraths in Limited is that you can telegraph your upcoming Wrath by uh, not doing anything, right? Like, it's pretty suspicious if I keep and don't mulligan and play out, uh, you know, three, four, five lands and then don't do anything, you might be like, hmm. One nice thing about this is that uh, the foretell part is actually doing something. And and if you, so what I could see here is like, imagine a sequence of uh, turn two, foretell something, turn three, foretell something, uh, turn four, foretell something, turn five, uh, doom scar away their entire board, pay two on one of your foretells, turn it into a creature and attack them, right? Like for example, there's a foretell that's a 3-3 uh, three, three flyer for foretell one and a blue. So you pay two once and then pay two later and you can, uh, you can do that. So I, I really like the way as a wrath that this lets, let, the, the, lets you potentially sequence your early plays in a way to blow them out with like a three for one level wrath without you having to have had taken any time off of doing stuff. Of course, you're gonna to need to be heavy foretell or uh, do other stuff, like maybe a card draw, like another good w another uh, uh, way that this could sequence well is there's like, although there's like a divination that, th there is no divination in the set, the divination is a foretell card. But if, for example, there were a divination, like foretelling on two into divination on three into, you know, wrathing on four could be an easy two for one, that kind of thing. So. Uh, Generally, wrath effects have been strong in limited simply because of their ability to do something that often no other cards in the set can do. Sometimes you'll play Doomscar in an aggressive white deck, not because it's synergistic with what you're doing, but because you don't always get to be aggro even if you want to, and then having this reset button is just incredibly powerful. It's like, sure, it's a mulligan to six in an aggro deck if you don't need to cast it, but if you don't need to cast it in an aggro deck, your plan is working. And it's generally good to run these in those types of decks anyway in limited, just to have the power to do something that the format just generally doesn't have a lot of. And you can be in these situations where, uh, how, how many times have you said, well, the only way they get out of this is if they have, and then insert name of wrath in the format, right? Like they can only get out of this if they have a wrath is something we often say. So it's really good to have wraths. And uh, and this is one that has a lot of clever play that I think makes it better than uh, even some of the four mana wraths we've seen in the past. I really love the ability to execute your game plan and make really strong steps towards a mid to late game without betraying your wrath status. So pretty cool. I like that one a lot. 
Next up, we have Skull Raid, which is three and a black for a common sorcery. Target opponent discards two cards, so that's pretty common, uh, rare, you know, no, rarity pun aside. Uh, the We see standard bearers set to set. Some black spell at common that for three plus mana causes opponent to discard two. Okay, so we got that. What's special about this one? If fewer than two cards were discarded this way, you draw cards equal to the difference. Interesting. That is another, uh, so it's got foretell, first of all. So again, this could be part of your, your plan. You're doing stuff without doing stuff. And uh, I was talking the other day about a, one way to design magic cards. How do you design a magic card that's fresh, new, interesting, and fun for people? One of the things you can do is take a standard bearer like uh, like Mind Rot. So for those of you who don't know the card Mind Rot, Mind Rot is three and a black uh, sorcery target player discards two cards, right? One of the things you can do when designing new cards, especially when you're trying to design um, variants of previous cards. So you're trying to do a discard two variant. One of the things you can ask yourself is uh, when do these cards suck? When you know when does mind rot? When is mind rot bad? Why don't we like mind rot? Well, classic example of why we don't like mind rot is if the format is too aggressive and Oppo dumps their hand, it becomes completely dead, right? Like it's an utterly dead card if Oppo is playing off the top and keeping their hand empty. So you've identified what we hate about Mind Rot. So as a designer, you can say to yourself, okay, people don't like Mind Rot effects because they're so dead late. What can I do to adjust this version of Mind Rot to affect that problem, to mitigate that problem? And that's what they've done here, right? If fewer than two cards were discarded this way, you draw cards equal to the difference. So. If you don't snag cards from them, at least you draw replacement cards. I think, I love that. What a beautiful little thought somebody had. I don't know who uh, at Wizards had that thought process, but I, I would bet a lot of money that exactly what I was talking about happened. That this card started with the notion of, I hate that discard two is so bad late when their hand is empty. What can I do about that? Right, So uh, it's a really interesting way to design magic cards, especially since this is a game that uh, creates new content all the time, but the new content is best when it is throwback, like you want some throwbackness to it so that people can work with it. So this is a great little tool for throwback card designs. I wanna make a throwback to X, so I'm gonna think about what would uh, fix X in the spots where people don't like it, and then uh, you get you get a new card out of it. So well done, golf clap for Skull Raid. I think we're gonna be taking this reasonably high because of the foretell. If it were just straight three and a black, uh, I would still applaud the design for having come up with a solution to the, the weakness of having Oppo discard two in the late game, but I don't know if it'd be worth you know excitedly running. With Fortel, though, I'm much more interested. It is just, you know, the installment plan is pretty cool here. And uh, uh, I think we're going to be playing this a lot since it acts as a, div as a divination for black if your opponent is out of gas. And uh, one thing that's going to make us want to do is start to keep potentially two lands in hand. Sometimes we sandbag a land because of discard or whatever, but uh, we may want to sandbag two lands so that they get no value out of their skull raids or lower value, right? So something to think about there, and uh, something for you to think about also is the fact that you can get this card and the other card and all the other cards we're looking at in this set from my sponsor, CardKingdom.com. If you're getting excited for Kaldheim, please remember that you can get all of this stuff, stuff pre-ordered from Card Kingdom, and if you use my affiliate link to do so, that means getting there via my panel down below in the uh, Twitch panels or checking the notes of my YouTube video or checking the link in chat here. It'll take you there from here and uh, keeps Card Kingdom happy with me and that'll help keep me on the air and help keeping us battling the gauntlet every Friday and all that stuff. So thank you so much Card Kingdom for your support. Thank you all for uh, the fun day today of Magic and thank you for checking out these cards. I'm going to sign off on this one, uh, but let you know, again, uh, especially YouTube friends, if you're getting itchy for this set, antsy for this set, Wednesday, the 27th, streamer preview day. And I'm going to be streaming much, much longer. So if you're a YouTube friend who has uh, 
trouble catching me based on the hour of day when I stream. I'm going to be streaming probably six to eight hours on uh, Wednesday the 27th. So uh, maybe we can find a ch chance to, to say hi in person. That would be, well, uh, live, I should say. In person comes after the vaccinations and the return of magic fests, right? Still looking forward to that, gang. You, me, magic fest someday? Yeah, someday. We'll get it back again someday. All right. Uh, bye, YouTube friends, and thank you for hanging out for this card discussion.